Do you ever let a comic book seller know that they're selling a book for a lot less than what it's worth? Of course you don't. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up an order I placed where one of the comic books that I bought, I really felt like I was getting a pretty good deal. And it may have flown under the radar a little bit in terms of value. It certainly, I believe, has a much higher ceiling if the book is graded uh, far beyond even the fair market value. But still, even for a raw book, if I'm looking at recent sales and the reported fair market value of the book, I feel like for the price that it was listed at, it was a steal. I was looking one morning at my data and analyzing it, looking for a pretty good value pick to share out on social media. And I found this book and it crossed my mind, like, do I actually share it out if uh, I'm about to consider buying it? Um, like, I, just, I didn't even want to let it go. Um, and it was certainly selfish of me to do so, uh, but at it, it, some point there are value picks and then there are books that are just priced incorrectly, I think. Uh, this order was placed with Atomic Avenue and I've talked about how they price books before where they have some sort of internal database or resource for comic book prices or, or some sort of internal price guide. And they will auto adjust prices. But what happens is the market will shift, I think, a lot faster than some of these systems that rely on data can react to. And one of these books is, I, it's probably a spec book technically, and it's related to the Armor Wars show that was officially announced at D23. There was some, I guess there was like a lull or, or some sort of gap in terms of news for this, I think it was just Marvel saving uh, the, the formal announcement that Armor Wars actually will be a series on Disney+, Plus, and I think they just wanted to save it for D23. But one of the speculations is that a storyline from The Punisher, where The Punisher actually has his own war machine armor, that that storyline will somehow find its way into Armor Wars. Armor Wars, it was confirmed to be, an, I guess on paper, a pretty decent adaptation of the comic book's Armor Wars story, which I loved. I, I read the original Armor Wars, didn't read so much Armor Wars 2, felt a little repetitive, but the original Armor Wars story, it just made sense to me as I was reading it. Just the fact that, sure, yeah, we've got all this great technology created by Tony Stark, and he's flying around in a suit of armor. Why wouldn't somebody try and steal his tech and actually start to build out armies of iron men. And some of this was discussed and, and talked about in the MCU. But what I loved about Armor Wars is Stark was just fed up. And he was just like, enough. I'm going to go track these individuals that have stolen my technology. And essentially just try and take the armor back. And he just goes on... Uh, on, on, a, on a hunt, like every issue, it was a new character that had some sort of armor. I remember even like Stingray uh, was a character that uh, he was fighting. And and what I've heard is that with this iteration of Armor Wars, it's going to be Rhodey instead of Tony that's going to be doing something similar. So the speculation is what characters are going to be in Armor Wars. And there's just kind of a wild rumor out there that the Punisher may show up in Armor Wars. We know that Marvel has been very slowly introducing characters that we believe to be uh, the team of Young Avengers, but I think that now we're also going to see the Netflix Marvel Universe or cast of characters. They, they're going to also make their way back into the MCU proper, and we know that Daredevil from the She-Hulk trailer will be one of those characters. We've seen Kingpin already in Hawkeye. It's just a matter of time before Punisher also returns. And will it be in Daredevil Born Again? Or will they put Punisher in to the Armor Wars show? So that is part of the speculation in terms of that book. 
So let me open this order. Let's get to the books. I can show you the book that I'm talking about, plus a few other great books that I found. You know, I centered the order around this particular issue of The Punisher, but found some other great uh, Bronze Age books to kind of go with it and uh, was really happy to be able to acquire the books. So now I really hope that the books are in great condition. So let me go ahead and open this order, take a look at the books, and if you stay to the end, I'll show you what I paid for them and see if it was worth it. Okay, here is that order that I placed with Atomic Avenue from the Seller Professors comics, who I adore, I love. So let's get this open. I made it. I did it. Defeated the tape monster once again. No, I didn't. There's more tape. So now the books are all taped together with scotch tape. Uh, <laughs> I have to very, very carefully just get the outer edge of the... Okay. Yeah, these are all going to be rebagged and boarded anyway. So let's look at the comics. Uh, the first one, Avengers 187. I have wanted this book for so long. I love the Scarlet Witch cover. Just a great John Byrne Avengers cover. This book is the origin of the Darkhold. Uh, you've got the witch on Wondagore Mountain. So a lot of uh, what was used as the backstory in Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness, was pulled from this book or referenced. And I just waited for the movie to come and go. Uh, and then the price kind of came back down. Next one is Fantastic Four 158. Not a key book, but what I thought about this one was uh, with it being uh, kind of an all white background, it was gonna be a little bit more of an interesting book to get in high grade. Uh, from the looks of it, it does have a little bit of smudging or, or ink smearing right there near the spine. Uh, and with most of these books too, it's gonna require some sort of press anyway. It's just a matter of then, do I also want to clean it? A little bit of just smudging of some sort along the spine, but uh, it looks to be in really, really great shape. So really, really nice 25 cent uh, cover back issue of, of Fantastic Four. Uh, same thing here with issue 207. This too is not a key, but you've got Spider-Man, the Human Torch, and just another great book that he had for sale. Uh, love buying these older Bronze Age books. Uh, the newspaper print, it's great for pressing and cleaning. It really looks uh, good. Just giving it a quick once over there. Corner looks really nice. Spine looks intact, just slightly miswrapped. I mean, these are, again, uh, great, like, 9.0 to 9.4 candidates for pressing all the way up to 9.8. So the book that I was talking about that was, uh, I think, was not priced correctly, Punisher 218 a, with cover art by the now uh, infamous Clayton Crane. <laughs> this is the first cameo appearance of the Punisher War Machine armor. Kind of interesting. It's a, definitely a full cover appearance, but I think it's being labeled as first cameo and then 219 is first full uh, in-story Punisher in the War Machine armor. It's a really, I think natural combination of two characters, Punisher and, and War Machine, definitely an amalgamation of the two, but uh, it just sort of makes sense. Uh, this is the Punisher War Machine part one. And I don't know if Armor Wars would maybe have a cameo of Punisher and then it could be an Armor War season two or a Punisher season one. I just feel like there has to be at least an episode of this, right? I mean, if he's taking the War Machine armor and there's an Armor War series and they're looking to tie in either past characters or bring someone from one universe to another into the MCU proper. Um, I think they just need to have interesting characters. Are they going to really have Stingray in there? I don't know. But uh, this is kind of what I was talking about where this book was mispriced. Um, I feel like as a buyer and as a comic book collector, that's part of the fun. It's Part of the fun is the hunt. 
It's hunting down books that, to be honest, aren't priced correctly, where you feel like, you know what, uh, I know the value of this. The seller may or may not. And in this case, the seller is relying on a platform that is going to adjust prices automatically. And that's one of the reasons I shop there is because I feel like I'm, I'm ahead of that game. I'm a step ahead of whatever automation is happening for those price adjustments. And if the sellers don't opt in for that price adjustment, then they're on their own. Um, and, and that's another reason why Mile High Comics prices things so ridiculously high is because they're protecting themselves from people like me that will come in and snipe these books off of their store. So on one hand, it makes me feel a little bit guilty where, okay, I'm buying whatever this ends up being. We'll take a look at the numbers here in a second. But, you know, a $15 to $20 book and I'm getting it for $3. It's, I'm not buying a $1,000 book for $3. I get that. We're still talking about uh, nickels and dimes here. But I believe that getting this book from this seller and looking at the historical data, this book was going to not just appear in high grade, but it was going to be at a really, really good gamble on a chance to get this book in a 9.8. And if it is, then it has tremendous upside uh, when graded. So let me finish out this order and then we'll take a look at the numbers. That's Punisher 218. And the last book, Tomb of Dracula number nine. Another book that's not a key, but the age of the book being listed as near mint from a seller that I know really cared for his collection. I did pay quite a bit for this, but I'm looking at this right now, and it's just gorgeous. Looking at the spine, it de it is miswrapped just slightly, just like the Fantastic Four book, but my goodness, I'm not seeing hardly any spine ticks here. I realize it's in the bag. I don't want to take it out of the bag and grade it completely, but just an absolute gorgeous copy of Tomb of Dracula number nine. And yes, not a key in terms of story or character appearances, but like I've talked about, eventually all of these books will become keys. It's just that there's no app or database that's actually just designating it as such. It's a great Bronze Age book in high grade, high quality. Colors look great. The cover is very, very dynamic. I love it. So I took a chance at getting this. So while the order was really centered around the upside on Punisher 218 and the gamble, again, of getting a modern book that's listed in near mint from a seller that typically sells silver, bronze, and copper age books, I thought, okay, there's a really, really good chance that he bought this and just filed it away in his collection and it's been sitting there as a 9-8 candidate all along. And then back to the older books, if they're listing Bronze Age books like this as near mint, even more so than Mile High Comics, I feel like this has a really, really good shot at being in that 9.4 near mint range right out of the box. So those are the books that I ordered. Let me take a look at the numbers and I can show you what I paid for these compared to fair market value and that upside that I talked about if I were to get these books graded. Okay, here is that order that I placed with Atomic Avenue back on September 3rd, 2022. Total cost for the order was $109.10. That included $11.60 shipping. There is no free shipping option with Professor's Comics. And the books that I'm able to acquire from him, I feel like are in really, really great shape, high grade. So I don't mind paying the shipping. And that really just comes with experience. That's really what I talk about is... You have to buy from certain sellers, whether it's that table at a show and you're like, I've, I've dealt with that seller before. Online stores, it doesn't matter. You have to track what you buy from them and, and the quality in the books. Um, if you have bad experiences with sellers, you want to make sure it's documented and that you're not acting out of emotion. And with this seller, uh, he's fantastic. It's amazing. So I, I love ordering from him. So let's compare what I paid against fair market value. Uh, you can see the total cost in column Z. Uh, the sum of each book adds up to $109.10. So I know my math is correct where I've distributed the cost of shipping across the five books. So that way I truly know how much I paid for each book. Now, comparing these against fair market value here in column AA, 
This is the raw value add to my collection. Just from a raw book perspective, a loss of $37.10. And I'm okay with that because I knew I was getting these books in high grade. So this is comparing to the fair market value. So the fair market value of Tomb of Dracula 9, for example, at $21 reported by cover price, that might be for a lesser condition. However, the $16 for 218 might be for that 9.2 to 9.6 range. So it kind of depends on the era and the most commonly reported condition. And that's how cover price sets the, the general fair market value of the book. Certainly if there was a 9.8 raw copy lying around and there was a lot of reported sales, it would be much higher than $21 in my opinion. So that's where I'm still kind of playing around with some of the analysis. But uh, let's say if we were to get these books graded and I ordered all of these in near mint condition. So near mint is 9.4. And then I wanna see if any of these books have value just as they are in 9.4. And we see that three of them are over $100, Avengers 187, that Punisher 218, and Tomb of Dracula, as you would expect, number nine in a 9.4, has a CGC value of $128. So now if I look at the CGC value, meaning if I were to send all of the books that had a positive value, if graded in a 9.4, I would stand to gain $146.48. And that's really why I placed the order. I'm not so much concerned with the raw fair market value. I'm not trying to flip raw books. I'm looking for books with high upside. Now, sending the 207 in would have been a mistake. It would, be a, it would have been a loss of $13 because it only has a $31 CGC value. But the expectation is not to send it in and get a 9.4. The expectation is to send it in shoot for a 9.8, and if it comes back a 9.4, this is what you'd expect in terms of your gains and losses with an order like this. Now, the fun that I have is let's pretend that you can get a 9.8 on all of these books, and what is the ceiling for an order like this? So if all of these books were to come back in a 9.8, you're talking about $1,423.48 for a five-book order, and that's after my cost to acquire the books, and the grading fees as well. The obvious one, Tomb of Dracula 9 in a 9.8, $720. So while it was the most expensive book that I purchased, if you look at the total cost at over $50, it's worth the risk to me. It was worth the risk to acquire it at 50. I knew that I had the, the buffer in at 9.4, sitting at that plus $100 value, but then, the upside from 9.4, that drastic value shift from 9.4 to 9.8, specifically because of the age of the book, the title, all of the speculation around Dracula, Midnight Suns, Ghost Rider, you name it, all, all of these characters coming in to sort of this uh, occult universe or sect of the MCU. Things like Werewolf by Night, Man-Thing, I, I really feel like they're going to move a little bit away from the cosmic and have this whole great like sort of mini or sub-universe of monsters and horror, and I think Dracula is going to be right in the center of it. So this one, ha having a tremendous value of $720, that was about half the order uh, in terms of CGC value. Punisher 218, though, again, $262. My total cost was 582, and that was after shipping. Uh, the list price on this book was three dollars and fifty cents. I don't know why. I don't know how. I feel like it was mismarked. I or maybe the system didn't update when I jumped on to to look for the book, and there it was. And so the total cost after shipping was five dollars and eighty two cents. But you're talking about a potential CGC value gain in a 9.8 of $223.50, just tremendous. The other big one, Fantastic Four 158. I talk about this too. I love buying the non-keys. I love buying the issues between the keys. $325 for that book in a 9.8. So I was very happy to spend $20 to acquire that book in high grade. But all of them, the last two, Fantastic Four 207, 189, and Avengers 187 and 200. Just, I... I love doing this. I love looking at these sorts of, I don't want to say anomalies, but just these weird gaps, not just in the market, but weird gaps at where you can acquire books, where 
prices just aren't current or for some reason a book just slips through the cracks and it could be anywhere it's not necessarily atomic avenue but it could be like i said at a convention uh, you have a dealer show up uh this happened to me um i was at a show looking for avengers annual 10 before i got two copies from heritage and i remember looking and they had a raw copy and i don't remember the price but the the basic gist of the story is i asked what is it on sale for they gave me a number I walked away and I'm like, let me do a lap. And I was thinking about the number they gave me and I looked at the book and I knew it was at least like a 9-0. And I'm like, I think they're giving that book away. That's crazy. And by the time I realized that it was so incorrectly priced and valued by that seller, I turned right around, went back, the book was gone. So that will happen not just with online systems or online grading or online pricing, uh, it, it's it's a matter of everybody keeping up with the ebbs and flows of the market and making sure that in this digital age that we live in, that people are pricing their books accordingly. And unfortunately, online comic book sellers, if you're not doing like a live claim sale where you're able to have like eBay up on one screen, your phone on one platform, then you're dual live streaming on YouTube and you've got all of this pricing data and it's a lot easier to do that and say um oh yeah this this Tuma Dracula it's a high grade um it goes for 700 bucks in a 98 so I'll, I'll I'll let it go for 450 you know you you don't have that luxury when you've got a system and you're putting the numbers in and you're letting the numbers fluctuate with the market or with whatever pricing source that you have or you just let it sit there and have a static value assigned to it. There's all kinds of crazy risk on behalf of the seller and lots and lots and lots of opportunities for us as buyers. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.